Thank you, former Bishop Mark Ramseth. It's good to see you. And I want to say to uh, Ron's grandkids, boy, your grandpa would be bursting his buttons. He would be so proud of you. And such an articulate family, talented, and uh, you are his legacy, along with uh, the many friends and the, the uh, seeds that were, of the gospel that were sown around. So just well done and uh, congratulations. Jesus said in John 10, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. When I think of Ron Johnson, my friend and mentor and pastor, he was one that lived life joyfully and shared that abundant life with all around him. He was full of life and sometimes full of other things. <laughs> he, he'd admit it. I met Rod when he came to Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Billings. And of course, we've enjoyed his, his rich baritone voice as he sang the liturgy or sang with exuberance those hymns of faith or the Norseman Quartet or in a musical like uh, um, Sound of Music or Fiddle Around the Roof. I remember at my senior year, I was all set to go to Concordia or PLU. And Pastor Ron came up when we were, our youth group were roller skating and put his, uh, put my head in an arm lock and asked, have you ever thought of going to Waldorf? And I said, what's a Waldorf? <laughs> oh, it's a small Lutheran college in Iowa with a wonderful choir. You love it. Well, you know that Ron played All-American football as a halfback there. And uh, he met the love of his life, Mary Ellen, and uh, had a great uh, time there. Ron knew, knew that my love for music, which he also had with Thrive at Waldorf. And when uh, Pastor Ron puts you in a headlock, you tend to listen. <laughs> so I went off to Waldorf. <laughs> Most people have experienced Ron as a fun-loving, you know, life-giving pastor who loved people and enjoyed telling jokes and stories and embellished stories. But Ron's greatest passion, as Heidi said, was telling the old, old story of Jesus and his love. His dynamic preaching and charismatic leadership helped Good Shepherd grow substantially to be the biggest in the Synod. But I experienced Ron as my pastor and counselor and I had gotten involved in the charismatic movement when I was in college and was trying to decide to go where, where to go after Walter. And one of my friends from West Tide in, in one of those groups warned me, oh, you don't want to go to Concordia. It's a spiritually dark place. <laughs> well, this friend saw doubts about my Luther theology and participation and told me that Jesus would never use wine for communion. It had to be grape juice because Jesus uh, would never use an alcoholic beverage that destroyed so many lives. And so confused, I went to Pastor Ron, and with those, with these deep-seated reservations about going to Concordia and staying in the Lutheran Church, and while also having broken up with a girlfriend, Pastor Ron, with his pastoral and theological wisdom, reassured me that our Lutheran understanding of word and sacrament was not in error. And he reassured, reassured me that there is life after a breakup. <laughs> he taught me about grace and faith, which is at the heart of our Lutheran heritage, which Ron loved so much. Mark Starkweather, one of Ron's confirmants, a good shepherd, wrote about Pastor Ron. I always remember his kind and confident eyes. He, was, he always made me feel important and a part of God's grace. That's a tribute that any pastor would welcome. I graduated from Concordia, and Ron encouraged me to go to Luther Northwestern Seminary. But before I went to seminary, I led a college and career group at Good Shepherd. And we had a fun Thanksgiving event um, where we had a humorous skit of Ole and Sven discovering America and having Thanksgiving with the pilgrims. And I asked Ron if he'd like to be a part, and of course he jumped in, like he usually does. He would be a dwarf at the Thanksgiving meal. 
<laughs> where pilgrims would stick their head through the sheet and someone would come around them and be his arms and feed him during the banquet. Well, the main course that day was chocolate pudding. <laughs> and Ron and the audience, audience were in tears laughing at the mess all over his face. But then Ron discovered that he had forgot to take off his new sports coat. And chocolate pudding was spilled all over his new jacket. And the blood rushed to his face as he got angry and upset. Lots of profane silence. <laughs> but St. Mary Ellen came to the rescue and assured him that dry cleaning would take it all out. Don't worry. And we had a great time looking back at that and laughing at that. You know, a life like ministry is often messy. But if you can laugh at your messes and those who made the mess with you, the journey is far richer. Ron was a human, and he knew he was both sinner and saint. Ultimately, it was the grace of God that he counted on for himself and his preaching. Christ's amazing grace undergirded his whole ministry. When he was at Good Shepherd, he wanted to quit smoking, but had a hard time. So, Charlie Fritz, right here, the renowned Western artist who was a Good Shepherd, offered to paint some pictures for him for the days that he got through without smoking. Or did Ron talk you into that, Charlie? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, Ron stopped smoking, and he got all those wonderful Fritz paintings, and 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 I considered starting smoking to see if I could get the same thing. <laughs> Ron was a full-time pastor, part-time car dealer, as he fixed up his latest car or bought and sold. A showman on stage who didn't mind putting others in the spotlight. Living with Ron, there are always surprises and new adventures. One time I came home from college, it was Christmas Eve, enjoying the services, the ambiance of the candles and carols and family. And just before we sang Silent Night, Ron interrupted and announced without telling me, Oh, uh, Brad Elgins is home from college. On the second verse, everybody hum, and he'll sing the soul. <laughs> well, that's Ron with surprises and a twinkle in his eye. A twinkle that I think our resurrected Lord had when he surprised his own disciples after his resurrection. Ron drove up to a spring, through a spring snowstorm in Westby to help officiate at our wedding. And at my sister Charlotte's wedding, he danced the polka so hard that sweat soaked his whole body. One of my relatives said, I can't believe he's a pastor. <laughs> he's so full of life. But then Ron made the mistake of going up to my father-in-law, a very pious and serious dame, and slapped him on the back and said, you ought to get out there and dance with your daughters. George, my father-in-law, went into shock, but survived. <laughs> Ron reminded me of Peter, celebrating life with full throttle, throttle, and occasionally stumbling and sticking his foot in his mouth. <laughs> but didn't Jesus go to celebrate the wedding at Cana with family and friends? I'm not sure he danced, but he did do something with amazing water that, that Ron probably would have approved of. Ron preached at my ordination, always an enthusiastic and encouraging mentor. Ron gave me Raymond Brown's commentary on John, and inside wrote these words. May the power of John's word and his example of love energize your ministry and provide insight into the proclamation of Christ's grace. We love you, Brad, and we'll pray for your ministry, Reverend John, Ron Johnstead and Mary Ellen. That's, that's Reverend John, Ron Johnston, lover and proclaimer of God's grace. In preaching and singing, in writing, and in music, in poetry. Ron also did my sister's weddings and priest of my ordination, as I said. He, he played pinochle with my dad for blood. <laughs> he was part of our family. And now the circle of life goes around. And I am... Um, Honored to return the favor and share at his memorial service and comfort his family. 
Abundant life comes through relationships with family and friends, with the family of God and Christ. As we weep with those who weep and mourn with those and rejoice with those who rejoice. Last spring after Chico's pastor's retreat, I stopped by to see Ron at his home in Immigrant. And his body had betrayed him. He was on oxygen. His strong body was now weakened by failing health. Out in the garage, he had built a, a man's cave. <laughs> and we spent several hours there singing and playing guitar, hearing poetry and stories that he had written. His creative energies were still going in his senior years. He gave me books and poems and music, but the greatest gift he gave was his love and his life. I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. What a life Ron lived. And now he shares that abundant life with Christ, which he so passionately preached about. And so with the Apostle Paul, I can hear Pastor Ron, Ivan Johnston say, the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. Not only to me, but all those who long for his appearing. Ron, it's been quite a race. You've made the race fun. You've inspired us with your passion and your enthusiasm. You pointed us towards the finish line, where Christ, the risen one, waits to greet us. And I joined Heidi in saying, well done, good and faithful servant.